Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk a lot about osmosis. And osmosis is basically solute-driven movement of water. We can define it more concretely as the movement of water from an area of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. And its purpose is to balance the solute concentration, and in other words, achieve equilibrium. So the key with osmosis is there has to be a difference in solute concentration on either side of a membrane. So for example, if we're considering a cell, the membrane would be the plasma membrane of the cell, and the two sides of it would be inside the cell, which we call intracellular, and outside the cell, which we call extracellular. And if for a given ion or particle, there's a differing concentration on either side of that membrane, we can have net movement of water, which is osmosis. So before we get into this down here, I want to talk about three things. Three kinds of solutions we can have. We can have what's called an isotonic solution, a hypertonic solution, or a hypotonic solution. Now, let's understand what this means. So when we talk about the solution, we're talking about the solution outside the cell. Unless stated otherwise, you're always to assume that the isotonic or hypertonic, whatever it happens to be, is talking about the solution outside the cell. Here in all three of these pictures, we're talking about a red blood cell. So the solution is what's outside of it, okay? the extracellular part. If we have an isotonic situation, that's where the solution and the cell have the same concentrations. This is what we want to happen, and this is always what we're trying to move toward. Iso means the same, so it's the same concentration outside the cell and inside the cell. And when that happens, the net diffusion of water, or osmosis, is balanced. Notice for any water that leaves the cell, an, an equal amount comes in. So it's balanced. Isotonic is balanced, both in terms of the direction of diffusion of water and the concentrations. All right, hypertonic. Hyper means above, sort of like epi um, that you've seen in uh, some prefixes, but hyper means above or greater. So a hypertonic solution, which was what we see on the right side here, this is a solution that has a high solute concentration. In other words, the solution outside the cell has a much higher concentration than inside the cell. Okay, has to be relative to inside the cell, but it's higher out here in the surrounding solution. That's what we mean by hypertonic. Hypotonic, hypo means below or low or something like that. So this would be a solution outside the cell that has a low solute concentration. We see that in the middle right here. We are to assume that this solute concentration in the, in the solution outside the cell is low and actually higher inside the cell. Okay, but just keep that in mind. These three terms refer to the solution outside of the cell. To really understand that, let's look at these two situations since, since these are the hardest to understand. All right, so we've got hypothetical situation here. We have a membrane. This is a plasma membrane of the cell. On the right side, we have the intracellular part. This is inside the cell. Out here is outside the cell or extracellular. And in this first example, we're going to assume the solution outside the cell is hypertonic. Okay. Notice I've put more particles out here all right, than inside the cell because it's hypertonic to inside the cell. All right. More solute particles outside. Which direction will water flow? Well, remember the definition of osmosis. It's the movement of water from an area of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. That's what osmosis is. So in this first example, there's actually lower solute inside the cell and higher outside. That's why it's hypertonic. So water's net diffusion would actually be toward the left here. It would actually be moving out of the cell to the extracellular side. And that's exactly what we see here. When we put a cell in a hypertonic solution, we actually have much more water that actually diffuses out. Okay? It does show in this picture some coming in, but there's more water diffusing out. Okay? So the net movement of water is out of the cell, and so if water is moving out of the cell, the cell will shrink. And this has a term that we use. It's called crenation or to crenate. 
So when a cell shrinks due to being in a hypertonic solution, we say that cell is crenating. Okay? Let's now consider the second case. Now everything's reversed. So we still have the membrane. Intracellular or inside the cell is on the right side. Extracellular or outside the cell is on the left side. But now our solution outside the cell is hypotonic. Remember that hypotonic means we have a relatively low concentration, only three dots here, a lot more inside the cell here. So we would say this extracellular solution that we're putting the cell in is hypotonic. Which direction does the water move? According to the definition of osmosis, it is always the movement of water from an area of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. And so in this case, water is going to have net movement to the right. It's going to move from outside the cell to inside the cell. Again, we see that in this picture right here. There is some movement of water out, but there's much more movement of water into the cell. Much more movement of water in. And so because the net movement of water is into the cell, the cell will actually swell and it'll expand and expand. And if this kind of pattern continues, the cell can actually burst. And that process is what we call lysis, cell lysis, or the cell has lysed, meaning it bursts. So hopefully now we can understand these two situations a little bit better. In a hypertonic solution, you're in a very concentrated solution. Okay, So out here it's much more concentrated, and so that's going to cause net water diffusion out, or we could say osmosis out of the cell, and so because this cell is losing water, it's going to shrink and we would say it's crenated. Okay? In the case of the hypotonic solution, so out here it's less concentrated, it's presumably more concentrated inside the cell, so water is going to have movement from outside the cell into the cell. That's going to cause the cell to swell, and eventually if this pattern continues, it'll get so much water inside here that it will lice, it will burst or explode. Okay? And so the key here is we want to maintain isotonicity or maintain an isotonic environment. Um, and that means that we have a balanced concentration outside the cell to inside the cell so that the net water movement or osmosis is balanced. And so the cell does not appreciably shrink or swell up. So hopefully that makes sense. One other aside I wanted to mention about the hypertonic solution, this is exactly why if you're stranded at sea, you should do everything in your power to not drink the seawater. Remember that seawater is very salty. And so if you're consuming what is a hypertonic solution, that is the seawater, that sodium will get into your blood and it will cause the blood to become increasingly concentrated, hypertonic, and your cells will shrink and that's actually part of the reason that you die. So hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully you learned a lot about osmosis in this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Join us in the next video where I show you how to determine the isotonic concentration via a graph. Join us then.